Hmm. You know, it's been a long time since I talked about something terrible. Well, time we change that. Fall, the season of change. Leaves turn colorful, the weather begins to get colder, and idiots like me decide to still be wearing shorts outside. As for the video game side of things though, this usually is a time when big AAA shooter games start being released to the market. Just this year alone, we have Destiny Rise of Iron, Battlefield 1, Titanfall 2, Gears 4, and of course, Call of Duty Infinite People are only buying this game to get Modern Warfare Remastered Warfare. With so many shooters coming out this season, it made me wonder, is there any bad FPS games out there that not many people talk about? You know, like a hidden gem of bad FPSs? And that's when I found this... thing. Hour of Victory for Xbox 360. Say hello, ladies and gentlemen, to what many sites claim to be the worst game of 2007. Why was it called that? Well, you'll see. One of the many complaints that this game has is that its graphics are pretty bad. But I don't know. I mean, the title screen looks fine enough to me. Ooh, yeah, mmm. Uh, ooh. Yep, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. You know, I would make the classic joke here that it looks like a PS2 game, but saying that would be an insult to the PS2. Honestly though, the place where this problem is most apparent is in the cutscenes. Not saying that these graphics get any better when you actually start playing the game itself, but you definitely notice the graphics a lot more in the scenes. This is especially true of the character models, which look disgusting, by the way. For starters, every single one of them has this weird and ugly grime on their textures. I guess it's supposed to be dirt or sand, you know, to make it seem like these guys have seen some action, but it just looks bad. Then you have the animation of these models, which ranges from normal to just plain awkward. Also, they don't blink. Like, at all. They just stare at everything. It kind of freaks me out. During gameplay, you don't really seem to notice that many problems with the character models, but what you do see is dropping frame rates, a draw distance that can go screw itself, and the always lovely colors of brown and gray. Oh, what joy. You know, to be honest with you guys, I could probably talk a lot more about the graphics, but there's only so many ways to say they suck before it becomes old news. So, if you don't mind me, I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about the story, which shouldn't be too hard because there barely is one. Now, I have played plenty of games with bad stories before, but Hour of Victories... Well, it takes the cake and swallows it whole. At the beginning of the game, this general has sent out a message to gather the three best troops in all the Allied forces. Okay, I, I just realized I may have forgotten to mention this, but I guess now is the perfect time to say it. Hour of Victory is set and loosely based around the battles fought in World War II. You probably have already guessed that from the footage I've been showing, but I just thought it would be good to clarify that. So the general sends for the three best troops in all the Allied forces, Officers Ross, Taggart, and Bull. They have been brought together to try and stop a German nuclear arms program called Raja Gotodameron, which good old Taggart over here explains it as... Gotodameron. It's a Wagner opera. Twilight of the Gods. End of the world. And that's all you need to know, really. You might think that I would go into a little bit about the characters being from different countries, nationalities, to form a team to go take down the Nazis' plot to destroy the world, but I can't. Because the game never goes into that. These three guys just form a team to fight the Nazis, and that's it. There's never any clashing personalities, no character building moments, no scenes of them trying to figure out how to be a team. They just join up and shoot some bad guys. Oh, and do you want to know more about Project Gata Damron? Well, so would I. And I'm the one who played the game. The very next scene after Taggart explains what Gata Damron means, Nazis attack the base in Al-Shatar, and now someone has to go fix a communications hub or... something. If that transition seemed jarring to you, then good. You have confirmed your humanity. And this is not the only cutscene that this happens in either. In almost all the cutscenes, there always seems to be this sort of ADD effect going on. The game will often have the characters mention these grand and spectacular events, all of which happen off-screen, mind you. Because of this, the game often feels like it can't focus on what's actually happening in the game itself, and when it does, it confirms what happened and just starts right into the next thing. 
There's no transition, no build-up, no pacing, again, no character moments, and worst of all, no explanation. Which in a normal human mind equals to no story. Okay, yes, one could say that there is a story here, but it is extremely weak and only just barely serves its purpose of tying in all the gameplay moments. Speaking of gameplay, let's talk about that now, shall we? This game plays like your everyday normal FPS... Eh, some of the time. For starters, the gunplay in this game is rather strange. Guns have two modes of fire, hip fire and iron sights. Now this is a standard of most FPS games, sure, but does something about this hip fire seem a little off to you? Well, it should, because every single gun in the game has the same hip fire reticle. It doesn't matter whether or not it's a pistol, an automatic weapon, a sniper rifle, or a throwing knife. It all has the exact same reticle. This makes aiming these weapons pretty dang hard, especially if you are trying to use a sniper or a pistol. Weapons that focus more on precision and less on spray and pray. I guess these developers realized this though and decided to make the hitboxes for the enemies one of the most broken things on the face of the earth. The problem here isn't the fact that you can't hit these guys, but rather it's the fact that you can even if you miss a shot. I swear, there were times when I was playing this game that I knew I missed my shot, but the guy still died anyway. Couple this with the AI's incompetency to take appropriate cover during a firefight, and you have enemies that will go down just like a... um... Uh, something that goes down. What the heck does that even mean? Despite this though, the game isn't exactly easy. The controls are very stiff and don't allow for any real good fluid motion. Crouching, jumping, sprinting, picking up weapons, it all feels stunted. Like the game needs you to be sure that what you really did is what you really wanted it to do. Needless to say, it's awkward. Oh, and remember those hitboxes from earlier? Well, guess what? Yours is just as bad. There will be times when you are taking cover that you will still be taking damage, despite not a single bit of you even being slightly exposed to the gunfire. It's just, it's just bad. As far as the level design goes, things are pretty linear. Most levels have you going from point A to B, mowing down any baddies that might be in your way. Some of them have you do on other things, like turning off a power generator or stealthily taking down guards in the tunnels, but other than that, it's pretty much the same for the infantry levels. You see, the game splits up its story into four campaigns, each consisting of about three to four levels each, and during each you will have an infantry section and a tank section. The tank sections are by far the worst part of this entire game. The levels that have you play as a tank have you trying to navigate through these narrow streets filled with infantry and eventually go out to a bigger part of the map where you fight enemy tanks. These narrow sections are by far the worst. Infantry units are at times really hard to see and some of these guys are armed with rocket launchers that just eat up your health in seconds. The natural thing to do is to try and avoid them and shoot back, but again, you are fighting in a combined space with a tank, mind you which means you are either going to end up dying, or you are just going to end up stuck on a tree. <sighs> I hate this game. I think by now you can see why this game was considered the worst of 2007. It falls flat on its story, looks like butt, and its gameplay is just so underdeveloped. Compare this game with any other game that came out that year like Bioshock, Uncharted, Portal, and many other titles, it just looks lazy. Is this game worth picking up for laughs? Eh, I guess so, but if you're looking for a game that's more of like the room for video games, I think a particular blue hedgehog might just be more up your alley. And with that, now I shall ask you guys a question. What is your personal favorite bad game? Kind of a guilty pleasure game, you might say. Comment below to let me know, and if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you are not already, go ahead and subscribe to see more legendary content in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, dudes.